Hello, all you beautiful people. I'm Shane Lindemann coming to you from the Shane Lindemann music page on Facebook and YouTube. If you're on Facebook and you're not subscribed to me on YouTube, check it out. If you're on YouTube and you're not following me on Facebook, check it out. Shane Lindemann music. Today we're going to be ranking the albums of Chick Corea's Return to Forever, one of the pioneer jazz fusion groups uh, from the early 70s on, you know, Return to Forever specifically did not do too many albums they only did seven studio releases so we'll be ranking those studio releases first order of business that i have to get to is talking about the album that was released under korea clark and white in 2011 i do not have it it's a uh, double CD, double album. Um, it's mostly live stuff, and it's, you know, trio, it's, it's live, it's acoustic with piano and bass and drums. Uh, one, the first CD is live acoustic, and then the second album, the second CD is, is more like a, kind of a proper Chick Corea uh, Return to Forever album with uh, synthesizers and electric pianos and stuff like that. They have some guests on it, like Gene Luke Ponte and uh, guitar players. Um, you know, I, I really, honestly, in the whole discography of Return to Forever, not a bad album. They Everything they did was top of the line. This album's no different. Uh, it's more live, so it's kind of hard to co uh, consider it an actual studio album. But I would rank this one at the bottom. That being said, it's fantastic uh, musicianship. Uh, everything on it is amazing. It just doesn't fit in to the studio albums. So that one comes in at the bottom. Uh, the next one that I have up is No Mystery, 1975. You know, this was actually a really big album for them. They won a Grammy for this. Uh, Al Demiola on guitar, Lenny White, drums, Stanley Clark, bass, and Chick Corea on keyboards. You know, this album is, is kind of like the least Return to Forever, Return to Forever album, in my opinion. It's not bad at all. It's really, actually, it's really good. If you like funk music, you'll probably love this album. You know, the first side is more funk-influenced, um, just really grooving, kind of jazz fusion, kind of uh, almost along the lines of like Weather Report or something. Um, but it just doesn't do it for me. The second half I like more because it's Chick Corea's composition style. I just kind of like his approach uh, to his compositions and this album being so widely written by all the other members of the band, uh, you know, there's an Al Demiola piece on there. They're all very good, but it just, uh, for me, it's, it's a little on the not so Return to Forever side. So that comes in uh, basically at the bottom. The next one for me is the self-titled debut. Return to Forever. You know, they did a couple albums uh, in this style with this lineup. Uh, it's more electric piano, kind of cocktail, lounge, jazz. Um, still very experimental and very ambitious, you know. Uh, there's no synthesizers or anything like that on it. So the uh, parts where they branch off and do some soundscape stuff it's actually pretty interesting because he's really just using his electric piano for all that stuff. So um, compositions are great. The songwriting is pretty good. The vocals are good. Um, not a bad album at all. Just more cocktail lounge jazz style. Not bad, which isn't bad, but it's just not what I prefer. The next one that they did after that was the same lineup. And it was like a continuation. I, I look at it as a continuation. This one's called Light as a Feather. You know, the flute work on it is incredible from Joe Farrell. Uh, let's go through the personnel for this one. We have Chick Corea on his electric piano, Stanley Clark on the bass, Joe Farrell on flute, soprano sax, <coughs> Artio Morera on drums and percussion, and Flora Purim on vocals. And a lot of these people after this album, a lot of the personnel kind of split off and went and wanted to start their own uh, ensembles. You know, there's some really good songwriting on here. Light as a Feather is really good. Captain Marvel, really good. Spain, 
one of Chick Corea's most famous tunes is on this album. This was 1973, I believe, 1973. Yep. So these two albums are kind of like a continuation of each other and they rank, you know, basically in order. This one is 72, this one is 73. You know, kind of getting to that more advanced thing. You know, Chick Corea had no synthesizers at this time, so, you know, that kind of sound was absent. The next one is where Have I Known You Before, 1974. This was their uh, first album with Al Demiola on guitar. And this was their second album as more of a jazz rock, jazz fusion group. Uh, they they kind of went away from the cocktail lounge jazz sound and got way harder. A um, little bit more progressive rock. You know, this album has one of my favorite uh, Return to Forever tunes on it, Song of the Pharaoh Kings. It's like a 14 and a half minute epic. It's just, and the, the melodies in it and the parts are just so good. You know, this is one of the more heavy on uh, Chick Corea's compositions, so uh, it's really good. The one that I like more than that, ironically, is the one that came before that. No Al Demiola on this one. This actually has Bill Connors on guitar. Uh, this is Hymn of the Seventh Galaxy. You know, from the from the first time I heard this album, I was like, this is really cool. This is top shelf, Return of Forever, for sure. You know, you have Hymn of the Seventh Galaxy, After the Cosmic Rain, Stanley Clark Peace, Captain Senor Mouse, Time to the Theme to the Mothership, Space Circus, and The Game Maker. Just really kind of out there, uh, jazz rock, jazz fusion sound. Um, that's just kind of got this edge to it. This is their first jazz rock album that they did after the initial lineup kind of went off on its own. It's really good. Hymn of the Seventh Galaxy. All right, coming in next for me, the sixth, my sixth most, or my, I'm sorry, my second most favorite is Romantic Warrior. You know, this is the culmination of all of the potential that the band had shown on their previous three albums, jazz rock, jazz fusion albums with the heavier tone. You know, this is actually more, far more mature, I think, than any of the ones that they did uh, previous to that, um, being starting with Hymn of the Seventh Galaxy, then Where Have I Known You Before, then No Mystery. This was their third album with Al Demiola on guitar. Uh, you know, the compositions are very uh, just I don't know very creative honestly um, spacey you know they're really Chick Corea is bringing in more of that uh, keyboard those keyboard tones that that just lend to a spacious kind of environment you know you have the romantic warrior majestic dance the musician or I'm sorry the magician duel of the jester and the tyrant parts one and two I mean you know this is an album that you could listen to a hundred times and find something new about it that's cool that you didn't realize before. So this is definitely a masterpiece, without a doubt. The seventh and final album that they did, which is my most favorite, Music Magic. I don't have it. Here it is. So unfortunately I don't have this album, but it's, uh, and I really wasn't too familiar with this album until I listened to it uh, a couple days ago. And I've listened to it, you know, a couple times since. You know, previous to that they did four jazz rock, jazz fusion albums with Al Demiola and with Bill Connors on guitar. And, you know, they kind of had that little bit of a heavier, sort of uh, more melodic uh, approach. With this album, Chick Corea said, we're, taking it we're, we're getting rid of all the the rock element pretty much we're going back to our cocktail lounge jazz kind of sound but what he did was he brought in another uh keyboardist gail moran and he plays some organs on it which is not a typical sound that you would hear in a lot of chick Corea compositions um you know, Chick Corea is really going to town on a, all kinds of different synthesizer, synthesizer sounds on here. 
So I think it's really culmination of that early sound with the uh, you know Fender Rhodes electric piano, and he's bringing in a lot of those kind of cool spacey uh, synthesizer mini Moog kind of tones. Stanley Clark on bass, bunch of uh, horn players, tenor trombone Harold Garrett, James E. Pugh on tenor trombone, John Thomas on trumpet, James Tinley Tinsley on piccolo trumpet. And then Joe Farrell comes back for this one on his flute, soprano sax. Um, you know, and uh, the vocals on this are really good. Um, Gail Morin does some of the vocals. I know there was some of the, somebody else who sings on this one. Gail Morin. Yeah, she played she played the the Hammond organ and other tones on this album and sang. And some of the songwriting on this is just like kind of catchy, almost like not stuff that you would think of from Chick Corea. But he still manages to keep that really avant garde, you know, crazy chords, crazy melodies, but still makes it catchy. You know, the musician, uh, music magic, the endless night. You know, some of the songs on here are kind of long and just super epic. And I think it's their best one, actually. It's the last album they did. Chick Corea said, no more after this. We're going to go ahead and call it quits on Return to Forever. Um, no guitar on this album. So, I don't know. Some people probably wouldn't like it as much as I like it. I think it's their masterpiece, actually. Um, and it's kind of hard for me to choose between these two. Uh, Romantic Warrior and music magic you know they're just such they're like return to forever kind of evolved finally to that stage where they're really mature and their compositions and, and and playing is just exactly what you would want it to be so um so that's my my list uh we'll go go ahead and go in reverse now music magic number one Romantic Warrior, number two. Hymn of the Seventh Galaxy, number three. Where Have I Known You Before, number four. Light as a Feather, number five. <coughs> Chikoria, Return of Forever, which was a Return to Forever album. It's not a Chick Corea album. That's number six. And then coming in at the bottom, but not a bad album at all. No mystery. And so that's my ranking the albums. You know, I'd be really interested to see what you guys rank the albums at. And I'm just going to throw in a couple honorable mentions. I'd like to do a Chick Corea show one of these days, but I know his, you know, discography is just massive. Um, you know, something that I've been listening to lately that's really, really good. The Leprechaun. You know, it's amazing how much great music he was putting out in that era between 1970, you know, three and 1976 or something like that. I mean, he put out so many albums. This is a solo album. It's kind of a um, supposed to be like a story. Really good. Stanley Clark, his first solo album was basically like an extended uh, Return to Forever album, Children of Forever. Uh, Chick Corea did the production on this, and uh, he penned one song on it, I believe, Sea Journey. You know, a classic, uh, a classic composition by Korea. You know, this is a really ambitious album. The My Spanish Art. A lot of stuff on here, a lot of music. This is basically like a piano concerto kind of thing. It's just, uh, if you like piano music, you'll like that. You know, and then later on in the 90s, he went and did his, uh, you know, eight early, late 80s, early 90s kind of thing was the electric band. You know, one of my favorites, Beneath the Mask. Fantastic. The electric band. I think Al Demiola plays a bit on this. Scott Henderson plays on this. Um, you know, this was kind of like really his, where he gets to where... He should have been, you know. 
Inside Out, Chick Corea Electric Band. Um, you know, I'd like to do a show on that, on the Electric Band one day. Maybe I will. Those are all honorable mentions. Uh, something for you to think about or check out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, ranking the albums. I plan to do quite a bit more. I see what else we got planned. I got a top 10 yes albums since there's so many yes albums. I don't really want to talk about them all. There's like 19. Um, Pat Metheny, uh, the Pat Metheny group. I'm going to rank the Pat Metheny group albums. There's 11 albums there. Uh, Shadow Facts, probably a band not too many people know of, uh, but, you know, a band that I really enjoy. Uh, I'm going to rank their albums. They have about nine or so um you know and then i'll think of other stuff as it goes but i hope you guys enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe to me on uh youtube shane lineman music and follow me on facebook at shane lineman music all right you guys have a good day